So what's the state of play in the Gujarat elections at this moment? Is the Aam Admi Party actually emerging as the principal competitor to the BJP? Or is this just a lot of sound and fury? And is the BJP doing the right thing by amplifying uh, the kind of comments that Gopal Italia made? Now, how many viewers watching India today at this time would have known of Gopal Italia before the BJP started playing up his past comments, digging them out of the archives and using them to attack the AAP. Why are they doing it? Why are they giving the Ahmadmi party so much prominence? Do they sense a threat? Are they picking up something from the ground uh, which people watching national TV don't know yet? Or are they just trying to split the votes three ways? Remember, the more the AAP gains in this election, the bigger the gap for the BJP because their margin, their fight is with the Congress and they could potentially do better than they would have done earlier. Joining us now are people who understand the nuances of Gujarat politics. Let me welcome Rajdeep Sardesai. Uh, we've got Rahul Srivastava. Rahul Srivastava spent the last several days traveling through Gujarat in trains, in buses, out on the road. So Rahul will give us a sense of what he picked up. We have Raghav Avasti joining us, political analyst, and will be joined in a moment by leaders from the political parties. So Rajdeep, is the BJP being very Machiavellian? by trying to up the ante around the AAP campaign, making them a big threat so that votes get split even more and they benefit? Or are they sensing danger from the AAP, which is why they have to attack Kejriwal and Italia? You know, uh, there are no easy answers to what you just said, but my sense is the manner in which, whether it is the Prime Minister, whether it is other leaders who've gone to Gujarat and targeted Aam Aadmi Party, now what we've seen with Gopal Italia, it almost suggests to me that the BJP wants AAP to be part of the conversation leading up to the Gujarat elections because the more the anti-BJP vote gets split in Gujarat, the better for the BJP. The best election uh, for the BJP was 2002 when, of course, it was post-Godra. Then if you go back, it was in 1990 that the BJP Rahul made their first breakthrough when there was a real three-cornered race. Chiman Bhai Patel had his party, Janta Dal Gujarat. There was the Congress and the BJP. And since 1995, the BJP hasn't lost an election. But the sense is that if the AAP is to grow, and some polls are putting the AAP at about 15 to 17 percent, is what the C voter poll suggested, that would indicate a diminishing of the Congress vote. Traditionally, in the last 25 years, the BJP has had between 47 to 50 percent of the vote, the Congress between 37 to 40 percent of the vote. So the BJP has won fairly comfortably, except in 2017, where the margins went down. No, but can I just pause you to say yes. that the Congress did this very successfully with Raj Thakre and the Maharashtra Navnirman Sena in 2009. Mm -hmm. But that time, the Congress and the BJP Sena were in a tighter fight then the BJP and the Congress this time, even though the Congress got about 77 seats last time, the Congress in 2022 has largely been missing in action, at least nationally. They are in Kerala, uh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, but not in Gujarat. Therefore, you already have the Congress which is down and out. You are winning in any case. Why build up this? It will benefit you in this election. But then the AAP becomes a competitor for uh, the next elections five years hence. That's a risk you're taking, that the AAP could be a future challenger. But for now, the Congress still remains the primary opposition Rahul in Gujarat. You look, let's look at this uh, this way. Gujarat has 182 seats. Eight municipal corporations between them give about 56 to 60 of the seats where the BJP has traditionally dominated. The Congress is, has done best in Saurashtra and in the tribal belt, about 27 tribal seats. Now it's the urban areas where AAP seems to have got some traction. If the AAP traction reaches 15-20%, who benefits from it? You believe that, the general belief at least is, that AAP is taking the Congress vote. We saw it in Gandhi Nagar. When there was a municipal election last year, uh, uh, the Congress's decline was largely because the AAP vote went up and the BJP swept the election. So for you, you're right that the BJP still believes they're winning. But the difference between a win and a sweep could well mean just how strongly the AAP does because a complete collapse of the Congress can only benefit the BJP in my view in Gujarat. So I know it's Machiavellian to even suggest that the BJP is propping up the AAP or pushing the AAP into the conversation. But my sense is that somewhere the BJP, at least in this election, 
wants to finish off the Congress before taking on the AAP challenge. But the Congress is largely finished off in Gujarat in any case. You had MLA, but it's after, there, MLA after 2017 leaving. Many of their local stalwarts are now in the BJP. And you're fi you know, the Congress in Gujarat is the perfect opposition for the BJP. You can pound them, win big in any case. AAP, on the other hand, gets under their skin, irritates them, is a pesky fly from a BJP perspective. It's who you don't want in your ointment. No, there I agree with you that I think the BJP will recognize that the AAP is in the narrative, in the conversation, travel in the, you know, in, in Ahmedabad, go to other places. AAP is very much part of the conversation. Whether that conversation translates into votes is a big question mark. The BJP, this is the one state where the BJP has a 45 to 50% no, vote over 25 years. But the AAP also has years. a track record. In Delhi, it didn't win the first time, neither in Punjab. They managed to make some inroads in the first election. They swept the second elections. So therefore, when the AAP is propped up and they come in that 15-20% range, you are, you, are, you are basically sowing the seeds for a potential AAP versus BJP fight in the next elections. But I want to go across to Rahul Srivastava because he traveled uh, through Gujarat for many days and I had the opportunity, Rahul, to meet with Gopal Italia when I was in Ahmedabad recently. He is a feisty, pugnacious kind of young politician, but nobody nationally knew about him. In the way the BJP has taken out these old videos, started attacking uh, Italia, they have given him some traction. Now, they could be doing this for two reasons. One, to split the vote, like Rajdeep and I were just discussing, and benefit in this election, or they sense a real danger from AAP, and they want to quash the AAP challenge. Which one is it? You travelled. Tell us what you picked up. Rahul, I think the BJP is walking a very, very thin line in Gujarat this time. See, there is no strong anti-incumbency visible against the BJP, but there is definitely a very strong fatigue factor. Fatigue factor because you have ruled the state for very long. Your last two chief ministers have not really painted uh, a picture which is uh, anywhere close to uh, Narendra Modi. There is a lot of corruption charges. There is a lot of unrest. In the last two months, in fact, there have been some 30 or protests in which the government had to scramble by offering certain swaps to the people. Prime Minister has unleashed a large number of inaugurations and schemes for uh, Gujarat. The fact remains that uh, somewhere, as you're, you're right, the BJP is trying to prop up a bit of uh, Ahmadbi party. But uh, Mr. Italia, though unknown, has a very checkered past. You know, he's quite a controversy quarter. So he... he was a, an employee of the state government, he was a constable, he threw shoes as a mini, at a minister of state, uh, Pradeep uh, Jadeja, uh, he had a case of NCPCR against him. But now if you see what is happening, is that it seems that the BJP is targeting Italia. Now one, the, BJ, uh, the Ahmadmi party is ravedy that shops which have been offered, especially the 300 uh, units of electricity is very popular. Why I say that? 1.6 crore uh, electricity connections, 1.2 crore people consume less than 1.3, uh, 300 units of power. That's one target for Arvind Kejriwal. And that is why there is an increasing perception that this, what is happening to Italia is very similar to what happened to Hardik Patel in November 2017, last time around. Hardik had emerged as a threat. No, but there is a difference. Hardik had the backing of the Partidar happening. community. At that time, there was general discontent amongst the very influential Partidar community. The AAP is trying to counter-attack by saying Italia is also a Partidar, the BJP is anti-Patel, which is why they are attacking him. But Italia isn't the kind of Patidar leader that Hardik Patel was. That's a fact. Now, if they keep attacking him, he gets more traction, gets more name recall. He could potentially become, but at this moment, he isn't. Someone like a Naresh Patel is a much bigger a Patidar leader than someone mm -hmm. like a Gopal Italia. But uh, Rahul, it seems that it's an attempt to attack the Aam Aadmi Party, target the image of the Aam. Okay. Yashwan Deshmukh actually is running polls in... Uh, Gujarat, they're not paying him for it, but we'll ask him nonetheless since he's a guest on the show. So please tell me, what are you picking up at this moment is, on a serious note, Yashwan, the AAP, the actual competitor against the BJP in this election, 
Is the BJP doing this as part of Chanakya Niti? The more the AAP gains, the more the votes get split, the bigger the victory margin, which is what C.R. Patil wants. He told me when I met him that I promised I'll get more than 150 seats. It'll be the biggest victory for Sahib, bigger than any that he won when he was Chief Minister. That's what I want to give to Sahib. Is that what they're working on? Or are they sensing danger from AAP? Well, it doesn't seem like a danger at this point of time, Rahul, for a simple reason that, you know, uh, our numbers for the ABP, when we pulled out, we, they were tracking up somebody around 17, 17 half a percent. And that wouldn't be the number. What is the I concentration? Would... How much of the 17 percent is coming from urban pockets? How much is coming from rural Gujarat? Well, it is pretty much uh, uh, evenly spread. I mean, a little bit more on the urban and less on the rural at the point of time. And but is it uh, widespread or is it concentrated? Is it dispersed or is it very concentrated no, in pockets? What's the ability dispersed. to convert these that. votes into seats? How much is the margin uh, on seats where they are closed? So far, so far in the ABP C voter tracker, we have realized that the, the, the growth of Amadmi party is quite secular and quite even right now at this point of time. And that is what something which is damaging the prospects of the Congress more than anybody else. So, all said and done, uh, any road plan, it is pretty much like, you know, our MTC voter tracker during the Uttarakhand elections, uh, Rahul, where at one point of time, when Uttarakhand Amadi party was actually at around 18% in that tracker. But from there, it fizzled out into, you know, like that 5 no, So, you poll weekly, tell us. What's the trend line? Is the up that, graph yeah, gaining I mean, traction in an upward slope or is it plateauing at this moment? This is a very make or break moment right now and we'll know in the coming week. Because what I feel from here onward, either our Madhi party's graph can go from 17, 18 to 25, 26, but or or they can just uh, land back to what their uh, or their Uttarakhand figures were like, where they got the traction but they fizzled out. What it seems like, however, is that... Uh, on the leadership rating, you know, in the ABPC voter survey, we figured out that the number of uh, people who were saying any AAP face was roughly around 16% uh, as the CM preference. There was not a single leader of Aam Aadmi Party who, 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 whose name was coming out as B1 uh, to be seen. So I guess this is going to help probably uh, Amadi party put the name of Gopal Italia as a person. No, but that is where Raghav Avasti, this, this doesn't make sense. The only reason I know Raghav Italia, sorry, the only reason I know Italia is because I traveled to Gujarat. We spent some time together. That's how, you know, nationally most people didn't know Italia. Now, pan Gujarat and even amongst people watching television and consuming news and social media, Italia, for good or for bad, is a face, a name. And uh, people will say, oh, the AAP is saying, that's their spin, that because he's party that the BJP is attacking him. Is the BJP doing a sensible mm -hmm. thing or could they be making a long-term mistake here? So, Rahul, I think a lot of people know Carrie Menati also. A lot of people know Kim Kardashian also. But they won't vote for people like that. So, just because uh, this gentleman is getting some traction for all of the wrong reasons, I don't think it means at all that... Uh, it will translate into any sort of popularity for the Amadi party. Uh, I am really surprised by the numbers that Yashwan Deshmukh ji is, uh, uh, is putting forth. 17 to 18 percent is quite a bit. And uh, I doubt very much that it would be so easy for the Amadi party to get 17 to 18 percent. 17 to 18 percent actually, I mean, might translate into a double figure tally. No, it doesn't. And In his poll, it translates only 0 to 2. But the question yes. is, how much of this Yashwant is coming from the uh, uh, BJP and how much of this 17% is coming from the can Congress? I, can I complete my point? Just, just one second, just one. Since you coming. mentioned the 17%, let me ask I, Yashwant I that question. I'm point. coming one back point, to you in just point. a moment. Hold that thought. Only, only about 3% coming from the BJP, around 14, 14 and a half coming from the Congress. So basically, uh, out of every 100 vote that Amadmi party getting attraction is roughly 25 is coming from the BJP and 75 from the Congress. Raghav. So, primarily it Raghav is damaging the Congress. Point no two opinion about it. Okay, Raghav. I think there was this video of Mr. Rajendra Pal Gautam who used to be a minister Correct. in Kedriwal's Delhi cabinet that had come out recently. And in that video, a lot of filthy invective was heaped upon Hindu gods and goddesses. And it was a thoroughly disgusting video. I think I would be really surprised personally if after that video, uh, the Aam Party manages to hold on 
to its uh, 17 to 18 percent tally. One last point though, the BJP in 2019, I'm talking about the Lok Sabha election here, it polled I think 58 or 59 percent of the vote. Yashwan ji can correct me if I am wrong. 60 percent plus. I think as far as the BJP is concerned, it would be very difficult to or anybody to challenge it. I think the only thing which remains to be seen is whether the tally is in excess of 130 or whether it is uh, around 100 that it was last time. Okay. Now, Reena Gupta from the Ahmadmi Party, the BJP will say that they are attacking Italia, not because they want to smash the Ahmadmi Party, but because he's attacked the Prime Minister. And there's a lot of sense in this that the Prime Minister is the most towering personality in Gujarat. You call the Prime Minister names, the BJP turns it into an emotional uh, kind of play like they did with Sonia Gandhi calling Modi Motke Saudagar. So there is perfect rationale behind AAP being attacked, Italia being attacked and this is going to hurt the AAP's prospects. See Rahul, it is very clear that the Bharatiya Janta Party is lo losing in Gujarat and they are not able to uh, basically come to a strategy on how to deal with the Aadmi Party. What they did Chal today... Losing thoda was... zada hao na. Thik -thik to lagalo that AAP is Are... fighting and can be seen in the fight which is fair but beating the BJP when I met Italia, I just want to mention to our viewers, he said that they had campaign uh, teams on 10,000 of the 50 or 1,000 uh, boots in the state. So if they themselves are on one-fifth of the boots, surely you are not beating the BJP just yet. And this is coming from your own leader. Rahul, abhi shuru hua, abhi puri picture baki hai. You see the way our vote share is going to go up. And I'm very sure Mr. Yashwant very soon on your TV program will come and tell you how we are doing uh, very well. But coming back to the incident of, 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 uh, of Italia, uh, Rahul, uh, you know, he is a very, very popular partisan leader over there. And we have seen time and again that Bharatiya Janta Party has insulted partisan leaders. Uh, last time there was the party that movement, they used police brutality against the movement. And now also a lot of youth are basically rallying around Gopal Italia. And that is the reason they have targeted him. Why could they not, uh, you know, summon him in Gujarat? Why did they have to bring him to Delhi for this? And if the NCW chief has to bring somebody, uh, you know, summon somebody to start from the prime minister, how can we forget his didi or didi comment why nothing you know no action was taken that time and in just the last two three days pravesh verma has given such hateful speeches and such derogatory languages against the chief minister of delhi has any action been taken their uttarakhand leaders have used such bad language against uh, all hindu goddesses has any action been taken but now i want to say one thing that uh bharti janta party should know that aam Admi party is not like congress if they arrest us, they harass us, we come out even stronger. Our volunteers are all charged up. Oh, and sure. what they've done with Gopal Italia today is actually going to backfire on them. Okay, so the AAP is a feisty competitor and the BJP acknowledges that also. Now, Rajdeep, two things could happen. The AAP's graph could plateau around this 17-18%. In Goa and Uttarakhand, we saw after the AAP saw some initial traction, it then kind of collapsed as happened in Punjab in 2017 as well. Or as Reena and uh, the likes of Vijay Nair, Kejriwal, uh, Raghav and uh, Manisha Surya would hope that from 1718, because of these attacks, the graph actually climbs. What's most likely? I think most likely is a urban, sharper urban rural divide in uh, Gujarat than even before. The fact is the Congress is still the principal opposition, even though it's been a weakened party in rural Gujarat. The AAP's maximum traction is urban Gujarat. Having said that, Gujarat is heavily urbanized. You know, barring a few constituencies in the core tribal belt, every Gujarat constituency will have a slightly semi-urban feel to it. Some small town or the other will be there. My sense though is that if you look at data, over the years, the gap between the Congress and the BJP has been, been anything between 5 to 10 percent. And the AAP coming in could well mean that the gap only widens between the BJP and the Congress. And even yeah, if vote share even percentages if, will come down, yes, the gap in seats could potentially go up because the votes get split. I am saying what happened in Gandhinagar during the municipal elections a year or two ago could well now happen on a larger canvas across urban Gujarat 
to the benefit of the BJP. In rural Gujarat, in tribal pockets, the Congress will still be a contender in some parts. But whether the Congress can even, at the moment, whether the Congress can even match its lowest ever figure. Remember, lowest ever figure of Congress in Gujarat is 33 in 1990, which was the three-cornered election. Therefore, I'm saying, the more this election in Gujarat becomes three-cornered, the more it is to the advantage of the BJP and the more the Congress, uh, the Congress will struggle. And therefore I keep wondering whether this AAP, uh, whether the more the AAP gains, even if it is a percentage or two, every gain of the AAP could be to the advantage of the BJP and the detriment of the no. Congress. No. That's where I am positioning this as a three-cornered race this but time is... in Gujarat, which is very unusual. For a traditional bipolar state. But there is this langar gossip in political circles, Rahul Srivastav, that the likes of Sharad Pawar, Nitish Kumar are working behind the scenes for some kind of tacit, unspoken understanding between the AAP and the Congress, telling the AAP that you focus on urban pockets, telling Congress you focus on North Saurashtra, the tribal belt, and aiming for a AAP Congress post poll tie up. Is this just fiction writers? and their brains working over time or could there be some truth in this? See Rahul, there is no tie-up talk. There is no post or pre-tie-up. What they are trying to tell Ahmadmi party is that if you look at what happened in Surat Municipal Corporation elections, uh, the uh, Ahmadmi party did pretty well. That means in an urban area where a lot of uh, issues like unemployment, corruption are uh, in vogue, AAP can be a better challenger than the Congress party. The Congress did incredibly well in the rural areas. If you see last elections in 2017, 55 urban seats, 44 won by BJP, 11 by Congress, 127 rural, semi-rural seats, uh, semi-urban seats, Congress won 68, BJP only uh, 55. That means there is a scope. So what the push from people like Nitish Kumar and others is that if in places like Saurashtra, the AAP backs down, in tribal belts where the Congress is much stronger than the BJP, AAP backs down again, which somebody like a Chotu Swasava tying up with the Congress, the Congress can do better in those areas and AAP. Now, whether that will work, because AAP has an ego, AAP has a political strategy, and it does not want to be seen as going with the Congress in any way. Now, the, I think the critical element will be how tacit they can keep it. Okay. There are very few people who understand the politics of... Uh... Gujarat better than Sheila Bhatt. Sheila Ben, welcome. I'm told you're in the United States on a holiday. It's nice of yes. you to join us. Tell us, is yeah. the AAP emerging as a real threat to the BJP or is this just a lot of song and fury with the hope of the BJP increasing its seat share? So, hi, hi Rahul. Uh, I'm in San Francisco. It's nice, around nice. Seven. We are here. Yeah. It's getting she polluted. She's becoming an energy, yeah. non-resident Gujarati. Which San Francisco is full of non-resident Gujarati. Is there any part of the world where you will not find a Gujarati? Gujarati is so six. Yeah. So, Rahul, I'm following uh, very closely Gujarat election from here, which all of us can't miss it. You know that. Uh, so, to tell you frankly, uh, just few hours before going to sleep, I was listening to very carefully Amit Shah's speech today. He was in uh, San Savayanath uh, uh, place, which is a pilgrimage place for the Dalits. And it is uh, almost 500 year old uh, uh, temple, where Amit Shah talked about launching a Gau Gujarat Gaurav Yatra. Okay. And you will, and you know, BJP has perfected its election campaign blue book so well that it, everything is happening on a very predictable line. One, this arrest of Gopal Italia, I understand that it's a, it's a kind of a force multiplier effect they want to do because Right now, a lot of churning is happening and as just now all of you were discussing very interestingly how AAP is doing uh, well and irritating BJP and all that. But I, I will sum up like this, that a lot of churning is happening. AAP is raising the issue, majorly issue of uh, inflation, uh, price rise, uh, this uh, costly gas, cooking gas and other issues. Plus, AAP has recently in last say three weeks has given tickets in many places to very unusual candidates. And that is that at the ground level, lot of churning and lot of 
debates are happening and i think bjp uh, i don't think bjp has done anything haphazardly or without strategy uh, gopal atalia italia is a known uh, i would say outsider type of a person in a society and he is a somehow weak link of up up is doing much better than what even gopal italia would have done uh without the uh, delhi up so what has happened is that italia is no hardik patel please remember that so his arrest is majorly to consolidate bjp score voters so that makes sense for bjp one and second thing i feel very strongly that uh, bjp uh, by arresting italia is actually showing us that they are very upset with congress that they are not catching up with in the election campaigning because that was a very cozy known predictable uh, uh, time tested uh, arrangement within gujarat politics so i think few things are happening and and uh, another point very important no but that's for, why uh, aap is shaking things up bjp and congress had this uh, side show you scratch my back i scratch your back which is where a party like aap comes in and says you know they're raising questions whether it's on contractual employees uh, whether it is on alcohol whether it is about spurious liquor they are raising questions that the bjp is now having to defend its track record uh, yashwant i want exactly. to ask you the same question that i asked rajdeep uh, is it like probable that the aap's vote share plateaus from here comes down like it did in um, goa in uttarakhand or could it potentially jump up what could happen as far as the simulation is concerned in this campaign which could turn things in these three directions no so uh, uh, in gujarat is a very uh, sensitive territory uh, on uh, in indian election in indian politics and i don't think we should uh, take a final stand on this right now because uh, candidates are not there but i i strongly feel that uh, bjp is counting up Okay, Yashwant. Okay. It's it today. So I will, I will say, Rahul, uh, I agree with what Shiraji said, and actually, I also agree with what Rajdeep said. And uh, uh, this is going to be a very critical juncture at this point of time. Uh, AAP has the potential to gain further traction for a simple reason. What I sense, Rahul, that AAP Madhi Party is getting a kind of a protest vote. and when i say a kind of a protest vote the protest vote is not a protest against the bjp what i feel aam aadmi party is getting the protest vote against congress in a way that they are not really riding up to the bjp so basically the anti bjp vote which would have ideally gone to the congress but somehow congress is not really you know focusing on gujarat and that is what is helping the aam aadmi party gain traction please remember rahul that you know this entire bharat jodo yatra is skipping gujarat altogether uh, gujarat somehow is not really coming up on congress uh, uh, scheme uh, or or its plan last time five years back they did get 77 seats but as radhi pointed out uh, you know it's like bjp was almost like 10 points ahead of the aam uh, of the congress last election also the vote share gap was huge it is just that the skew of the urban and rural seats in gujarat that bjp manages to win urban seats by really huge margins and which kind of takes their overall state share uh, vote share quite high uh, and that is where the congress had a chance and last time the saurashtra equation was pretty peculiar please remember the patidar andolan actually has hurt uh, bjp big time so hypothetically speaking rahul suppose there would not have been aam aadmi party in this election this is a very classical equation to understand suppose there would not have been any aam aadmi party in this election many would have liked to conclude that okay congress might have gained from 77 to 100 plus something no it was not going to happen because the entire gain of the congress on the back of the uh, uh, patidar andolan and particularly in saurashtra was that this time I mean, all said and done, even in the absence of Aam Aadmi Party, BJP was likely to sweep this election. Okay. Unless something is spectacular. So now, Reena Gupta, this whole idea that opposition leaders like Pawar and Nitish are working behind the scenes for some kind of a tacit understanding, and it's true in some senses that Kejriwal and Aap are now focusing more on the urban centres than they are 
in rural and tribal Gujarat. So is that there some I some khichdi that's, that's cooking? For Aam Aadmi Party, Rahul. Rahul, that will backfire big time for Aam Aadmi Party if there is even a slightest of uh, uh, of uh, of uh, you know public posturing that they are kind of coordinating somewhere in the with the Congress camp. No, no, but publicly I, they'll I, deny it. Publicly yeah. they'll deny it. Let's hear what Rina has no, to say. Rina is some khichdi cooking can in can Gujarat. Respond, please. Let us speak, Rina. Rahul, first of all, I don't know why you all are saying it's a three-cornered fight. You go to the ground. I've just come back from Gujarat. Congress is finished in Gujarat. The Gujaratis are very clear. It's a fight between Amadi Party and Bharatiya Janata Party. The reason that Bharatiya Janata Party has ruled for 27 years in spite of all the misgovernance is because Congress was never able to provide a proper opposition. This is the first time that there's a real opposition in Gujarat. And Amadi Party is getting a lot of, uh, you know, love and encouragement wherever we are going, whether it's rural areas or it's urban areas. We are not in an understanding with anybody. You know, nobody out there, we are not in an understanding. This is a pigment of people's imaginations, people sitting in uh, TV studios or wherever else, I don't know. But there is no understanding, there's no conversations with anybody. We are there to talk about our governance model of Delhi and what we have started to do in Punjab. And people of Gujarat have realized that even after 27 years, why should they be getting such expensive electricity? Why should there no be no schools, no good hospitals, okay. no good roads? And they are tired of this misgovernance. They are seeing a real hope in Aam Aadmi Party. And you see slowly our graph is going to go up, Rahul. A lot of our voters are silent voters. They might not come out in surveys right now, but slowly as the elections come near, you will see a big shift towards Aam Aadmi Party. Okay, I enjoyed this conversation. At least... There is uh, some kind of a fight the AAP is putting up. There's a big gap and AAP especially is just about starting out in Gujarat. The BJP is deeply entrenched. But it does spice things up a little bit more. The Congress is hardly fighting. They're more in Karnataka at this moment hoping to win against the Bombay government. That's really their big hope. They've kind of given up on Gujarat, not putting the kind of fight that they did uh, even back in 2017. So at least all this attack on Italia, the counter-attack that he's... A uh, party dar, which is why he's being targeted, just makes things more exciting. We're we'll traveling to Gujarat in a few uh, days from now, and at least there's something to talk about, something to focus on. So, uh, Yashwan, uh, keep do doing the work that you are. Sheila Ben, please come back from San Francisco. You're over there. The weather is good. We are here. It's getting polluted, so we're missing you. So please come back. Uh, Rahul yes. Shivastav uh, will be putting out a lot of stories which he filmed during his Gujarat travels. We'll play that out for our viewers. Uh, and Rina Gupta for joining us on the news track. Thank you very much.